yeah. Well, we have a lovely plant. You have to admit it's a, it's it's normally as plants go, it's probably high up there in terms of uh, greenery and water. Uh, it has all the wonderful complexities of a uh, cultivated plant where people like would like to go, would like to visit, would like kind of like a playland, you know? <laughs> it's like, look at all these interesting things. It's got mountains. It's got deep rivers. It's got gorges. It's got deserts that go on and on and on. And it's got, you know, Antarctica. And it's got funny people running around. And it's got the, all these animals. We don't have animals. You know, we've got millions of species of animals. Sure. <laughs> Come on, mom. Kids, let's get in the old jalopy here. Let's take like the old the old flying saucer and let's spend a couple of months over there on planet Earth. Well, hey, and enjoy. You, what Karen Banks earlier said that Earth could be nothing more than basically a zoo, you know, and maybe we were a zoo and they come down and visit us as the same way you take your kids to the zoo. Yeah, yeah. I mean, why not? You know, I had this idea. Uh, one of my books that I mentioned, I will write a uh, science fiction story which is where everybody, every single person on planet Earth has their own planet somewhere in the cosmos, and they have it mocked up, they have it created just the way they want it. So if some guy used to play with trains, you know, those little uh, model trains as a kid, he could have a planet with nothing but trains on it. Big trains, little trains, you know, fast-moving trains, slow-moving trains, complicated trains, Trains with or without freight cars, you know, <laughs> steam, steam generated, diesel generated, nuclear generated. He can have a whole planet, so everybody can have their own planet just the way they want it. <laughs> they can they can visit it anytime they wanted to. They didn't have to live there. They could that would just be their hobby, their hobby planet. They just go there to for relaxation, you know, rest and relaxation, you know, as a recuperation. That I, was an idea I wanted to write a book about. Well, you know, again, one of my hosts keeps on his show, keeps saying that we're nothing more than being in the computer uh, metrics, that life is not human. We're just a symbolization of a uh, program running in a computer. What do you feel about that one? Well, I gave you that link. Did you did you look at that link, uh, the NASA 2, the ex, NASA 2 is exposed? Because there's a segment which talks about that exact idea, how we're running on a master computer program. Yeah, but what would be the point of us running on a uh, master computer? I mean, th that doesn't well, make any Well, some people believe that we are all, you know, you, some people believe that we're all predestined to, to do what we do because it's already been predestined, you see? That would be a computer program. Well, I guess. Of course, but... there's many ways, well, there's many ways to, to fracture that, that theory. But, uh, I mean, that is a, a theory, that is an idea. Just like uh, there are still people on the planet that believe we're, it's a, that the Earth is flat. I was just going to say that. Is. You just stole that from me, Charles. Well, I didn't mean to, but it just, it just, it just segues real easily into that. Well, you know <laughs> what? I've had a couple of those people on my show, and, and I stump them with, with one basic question. If the world is flat, what keeps the oceans in place without running off the, the flat planet? Yeah. Why? Do, if well, we already have pictures from. We, yeah, we already have photos from outer space from our satellites. We, we've already a thousand times we've proven it, it's round. Oh, you know. again, there's people out there that don't believe the world is round. They look at that as propaganda yeah. put out by the government, and, and they they come yeah. to the conclusion that that's all fake. I mean, people can believe what they want to believe, and that's you know, I guess. Sure. I guess that's okay if you want to believe the world is flat and, you know, if you want yeah. to believe that there's no such thing as UFOs and, and if you want to believe that you originated and I originated from a chimpanzee, I guess that's okay, too. Yeah, yeah. It serves them in some way, so good. Let it, let it serve them in the way that, that, that makes them feel good, you know. We may laugh at it uh, or not. Uh, but uh, it's their it's their reality, so fine. Let them have that reality. That's fine with me. But don't tell me that I'm going to fall off the freaking end of the earth if I sail 2,000 miles over to Europe. And don't tell me that I can't leave the planet because it, it's uh, it's held down underneath. Uh, it's it's tethered to something uh, a huge rock in space. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't make me laugh. I'll have to run to the bathroom at my age. <laughs> yeah. 
But we now we're gone into the medieval times. In the medieval times, you know, we came so far. You had music, you had art, you had literature, you had people, you know, learning things, building, you know, buildings, building, you know, roads, building technology, coming up with new things. Yeah. But at the same time, yeah. you had people being crucified yet, people uh, being tortured uh, because of their religion uh, so at the same time yeah. we were moving into that, we were moving into the other, and that's the scary part. Well, man has always had a reactive impulse um, to things that are alien or not easily understood, and there's also a resistance to change. Change sometimes can bring good and sometimes it can bring bad, as in the weather changing, tornado, hurricane, squalls, you know, just that simple uh, uh, example right there. Not to mention the stock market, you know, and other things that crash and and go boom. Um, People, by and large, like to have things kind kind of glide along in a normal kind of calm way, but that's not the way it is. Um, we live on a planet which may not be as turbulent, uh, may not be as turbulent as the uh, winds of Jupiter at 400 miles an hour, or as cold as Pluto. But we do get changes in our environment that can upset our lifestyle, and uh, people are very chary of that, chary as they say in England, um, and with good reason, um, because also change. If one makes a change and they were kind of getting along in normal, they may go right into emergency or danger, you know, whereas they may lose their grip on their uh, livelihood or their grip on their relationships or even their grip on their very existence in the environment where they live, their house, their home, uh, you know, uh, their plantation. Uh, they could lose all of it. They, and And there's a reason why people like the status quo. There is something to be said about keeping your nose clean and obeying the laws, even though the laws are mostly man-made. Um, so, yeah, so there's that that yin and yang, that give and take. And so you do have a, a part of the culture, a part of the society, which um, uses that fear or that uh, anxiety about change, and they use it wrongly uh, to stop people from investigating the canons of some religion or the uh, idols of some religion or the, uh, sac- the sacred uh, beliefs of some religion. They suppress that. And then you get things like uh, witch burning and crucifixions. And, uh, oh, I'm trying to think of the name of the man who uh, um, started the Inquisition. Can no. you think of his name? I, I, I can't. I, I, I just totally draw a blank on that. Yeah, he's the bad guy. <laughs> he's the bad guy. Uh-huh. So yeah, so yeah, so so we we have good we have good going forward. But luckily, there's much more good than bad or evil. So we're still limping along. And one of these days, we'll get a society that will be smart enough and aware enough to detect those bad guys before they get into power. You see, and get them out of power so they don't create so much havoc. I don't know. You know, I, I, I don't want to get political, but I will say this. In our own country, I have watched how our elections have gone, not just for the president, but for congressmen, for senators. It, people, it seems like they can get brainwashed. All you have to do is get up there and tell them what they, they, they want to hear. And if you can convince them that you're going to do what they want, they'll vote for you. And that's the yeah. scary part. I mean, I mean, I'm looking at way things are going in our country. It, it's scary, and I, 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 I it, and not just that. We have stripped on the EPA. We have, we got a, a administration that doesn't believe that there isn't global warming or cold, uh, freezing going on. Want to take your pick? Because I think we're going to go into the global warming, and then we're going to go into a mini ice age or a full-blown ice age. Or if we don't do that, we're going to have a magnetic uh, flip, the way that's going. Yeah. And they they don't yeah. tell the people. And that's the scary part. And, and people yeah. want to believe in something, so that's why we're in this mess. 
and 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 yeah. it's scary. I brought it up honestly on my show so many times. You know, if we get a solar flare or anything strange happens, our grid system is gone. It isn't going to be up tomorrow or next yeah. week or next month or next year. It could take years. Yeah. But before that happened, how many people are going to die? You want to? You remember Mad Max, the, the, the two movies, Mad Max. It, it, oh, yeah. It won't take long if our grid system is down before we start going into weird things in this country, this world. Yeah. You know, I wonder if that kind of cataclysm would actually draw the interest and the sucker from the uh, well-intentioned uh, alien visitors. That, that might be a, that might be a, um, a threshold or a... Um, what do you call that? Um, where two roads cross? Um, it doesn't matter. Get the idea that that might be a, a time when we will reach out in earnest for the type of help that they could give us to rectify that cataclysm. So that, might, that might turn out to be a good thing. Not that I'm predicting that it will happen or that it should happen, but I'm saying that might just turn out to be the time when we most need and will be happy to acknowledge the fact that there are other civilizations that are more powerful or more uh, advanced than we are. Well, they would be more advanced. I mean, I was reading a book here the other day, and they, the, the author claimed, you know, uh, and well-known, I'm not going to mention his name, but he said that he believes that the 100 million years more advanced than we could be. Uh, and, and, and again, his feeling is that they would look at us as no more then we go out and look at cattle. And and I hate to say it. So, I mean, would they really come and help us at that point? Because they might not really understand us. If we're being uh, abducted without our permission, does that mean that they care about us? If they're taking people and implanting them, does that mean they care about us? Uh, people disappearing, does that mean they care about us? Hmm. Yeah. Well, for everyone... Every story of being abducted, there's one of being returned, um, usually in a somewhat hypnotic state, so they don't remember. But there are those few that do remember everything that occurred. Of course, maybe because they're stronger, you know, spiritually, they weren't affected by the uh, implant as much. But whatever, uh, the, you have stories and evidence, uh, you know, blow by blow descriptions of them being abducted and what was done to them and what kind of experiments were on them and when they were returned and what the aliens look like and uh, you know how they treated them and so forth. I've, I've read through several of these and there's several available, uh, I believe, on YouTube as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, it goes both ways again. It goes both ways. You've got the ones that uh, come back and they're implanted or terribly afraid of the even mentioning the word alien. And then there are those that uh, say, yeah, it happened and this is what happened and uh, I'm going to tell people about it. I'm going to write a book about it. And they write a book about it. So yeah. Yeah, and but what's the point of being implanted? I wonder what they're doing. Are, are they monitoring the person's health, monitoring that person's Possibly. thoughts? I mean, it could be a combination well, we of all of it. it. We do it. We 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 even have people that believe that uh, we should have these little implants in our in our underneath our skin behind our ears. The people that uh, think that's a great idea, you know, to, to have a little extra brain to to keep you out of trouble. And look what we do with animals. We tag animals. We tag we tag uh, whales, sharks, porpoises to watch them and monitor them. So why not? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that kind of scares me because if they cared about us and, 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 and giving off orbs and loving feelings towards humans, I don't think they'd be doing that. I just, I don't. Well, get, I, get, get the idea that we do care about these animals so much so that we want to make sure that they are, we want to know what their migration uh, cycles are. We want to know what their uh, reproductive cycles are because some of these animals um, some of these uh, sharks, for instance, I was just reading about some of these uh, sharks called a basking shark. They're almost extinct, uh, although the basking shark isn't one of them. But there are some of these uh, uh, wonderful creatures um, that are going extinct, and we have to tag them to find out how we can hopefully uh, keep them from going extinct. So there's that to, to think about, too. I don't think most of the, uh, the visitors to our planet uh, want to see us... Uh, uh, die out as a civilization. I think, like I said, they love the planet, and I think they believe that we can come right as a civilization eventually if we get enough information and we apply it 
wisely uh, to our social